This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by GoToAssist. I'm all about all those different kinds of file sharing services. Let's see, I've checked out SparkleShare, BitTorrent, Sync, uh, the one from last week, of course, and I've also checked out OwnCloud. Now, we did get some feedback from one of our viewers named Alexander about OwnCloud and a new one called CFile, which I'm going to check out this week. So I want to go ahead and get into his feedback real quick. He states that the file synchronization in OwnCloud is very buggy at times. After almost four years, they are still not able to maintain a stable version or fix errors in a timely manner, and that kind of stinks. Now, at the current shabby state, I really don't feel like paying for OwnCloud. I feel that CFile does a way better job at synchronizing files than OwnCloud has ever done. The web interface is more confusing and there are far less features in CFile than in OwnCloud at the moment, but at least the few available features work after the initial configuration. So now it's time for my own CFile review. This is my first time really checking it out and I definitely wanted to find something that's not only easy to use on the GUI side, but also has lots of customization features because we all love to customize. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like. It's very easy. You just have to download it from the CFile website, which is cfile.com. And they talk about how they're open source and everything. Hopefully they really are. Turns out they are. That's probably one of my favorite absolute pros about this is the fact that they truly are open source and they have a very large team of collaborators as well as a big community who has actually checked out everything that's going on on the background to make sure that it's totally done right. So. All you have to do is download it, and luckily it is available for both Windows, Mac, and Linux, Android, and iOS as well. So you can view and be able to sync everything on your mobile devices as well. Now once you download it, you get this nice little icon down here. It doesn't even have to do anything. You don't even have to open any other programs. It's just a nice little icon right here. When you click on this, it pulls up in a web interface. And this is actually on my local client. So I, I have a local server running right here, 127.0.0.1. And then it shows me my C file client. Now you can see that I already have a folder sync called mass.duff. And I'm also going to show you what it looks like from their website as well. Now. You have the choice to sign up right here. Now you do want to sign up on their site because you do get one gig of free file uh, synchronization on their, on their server, which is pretty nice. And it is encrypted. I'll get back to that in just a few moments. Now I'll go over to, here we go. So once you log on through their website, you can see this, which looks pretty similar to GitHub, if you're some familiar with that as well, you'll see down at the bottom under name, I don't have any files synced right now. So I can go over here and upload something. And I can drag and drop. So I'm going to minimize this and I'm going to go over to, let's see, here's my BitTorrent sync. I'm going to just drag and drop that over here. Silly picture of me and my bro. And then click start. And it's going to automatically upload it and hopefully sync to, there it is. Now, if I go over to my C file client, I'll just refresh this. If I click on my folder, in my folder, sync now, oh, there it is. So it just opened up, and you'll see that there it is. Ah, I already had it open, perfect. So this is the folder that it's going to sync to on my local computer, and I can also see that it syncs into my web browser, which is very, very nice. Now, I did mention encryption. CFile uses AES 128-bit encryption. And this encryption goes on in the background no matter when you're uploading or downloading. So everything that you do on their local service is encrypted. So you're good to go. So once you create your account on their site, you got everything up and running, you got your one gig of free space, now you can go ahead and create a new library. Now I'll go ahead and do that for you. Go to my file. And I'll maximize this for you guys. I can create this thing called a new directory. And I'll call it um, snubs stuff. Submit. So now I have this nice new folder right here. What I can do with this, all right, so here's the snub stuff directory. Not a lot of options that I have with this. I can just delete, rename, move, and copy it. So there's not too much going on. I can also click into it and create more uploads here or download whatever I've already 
uploaded into it. Now, it can sync a folder on your computer or on several computers at the same time, and you can also share it with friends, and it, you can do either offering read-only or read-write abilities. There's not anything else that you can offer whenever you're doing sharing with family and friends. Now, if I want to share something, for example, I want to share this picture that I just uploaded, which shows up as well in the interface. So I'll, close, I'll go back. I can click on share right here, and I can do either a private share or a share link. And that's it. I can also have the option to update or download, and I can do all the other delete, rename, move, copy, etc., etc. Now say I want to share an entire folder that I've created on my, on my computer that I've been syncing up to cCloud. What I'll do is go back into the interface. I'll click on My Home up at the top, right up here. And this is the folder that I've been playing around in. So I can click on here and either download and sync the entire thing. I can share it. So I can enter email addresses or a group if I've created a group of contacts that I've wanted to share it with. And then I can choose whether I want to read, write it or just read only so they can only look at the files. And then you click submit and you close. You also have a couple of other options like you can um, set up a payment account if you want to add additional storage to your account. You can change your profile name and things such as that nature. But one thing you cannot change is a password for an encrypted library. So one nice thing about having cCloud is that you can change the encryption from library to library. But each time you do it, that password cannot change once you've actually created it. What you can do, which they state on their FAQ, is that you can create a new library with a new password, and then you can just copy files all over to the new one. Now, if you want to sync via the desktop client, all of that is done locally. And that password can be changed on your local computer because the password is also saved locally. So let's discuss a couple of my pros and cons about C file specifically. Now, my pros on this, it's really easy. It's really, really fast to use. Yes, I got to say the interface is a little bit confusing, but that's just because it's something new. It's something that I got to get used to. It's definitely open source. It's checked by the community. Definite pro. Now, on the con side, yeah, there's not a lot of customization options or features. For example, one thing you can do in own cloud is sync a calendar. That's not available in C file. You can create a, your own server version of C file too on your own Linux server, which is also a nice pro as well. So I have to say, of the four or five that I checked out, C file is definitely one of my top favorites, or along with probably BitTorrent Sync. That one's also really, really nice. On the downside, probably, uh, say own cloud. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit buggy, so it's definitely not one of my favorites. And um, I would like to see some more capabilities built into it, you know, that actually work. Now that about wraps it up for my segment, but make sure to email me feedback at hack5.org. Let me know what you think of C file. Is it one of your favorites? Do you actually use it? Let me know. And we'll be right back after a quick break. More and more people are working from the cloud using different devices, bringing their own devices to work, working from anywhere. I mean, if you're in IT supporting all of these clients, all of these employees, it can be absolutely challenging. And this is why I highly recommend Go to Assist by Citrix. I mean, it is an easy to use cloud-based platform, so you can assist anyone, anywhere, on any device, and it's one integrated tool set, including a service desk to track and log these incidents, remote support so you can quickly resolve people's technical issues on any PC, Mac, or mobile device, and of course, monitoring to be proactive, it scans your entire IT infrastructure so you can fix those problems before your boss is calling you about the Exchange server nobody ever wants to hear that call. So with GoToAssist, you're going to be equipped to provide powerful you know, tools. You can adapt to your customers' needs. You can deliver remarkable support, not just like, oh, I got the issue fixed, but like the, whoa, that was fixed and it was easy. So if you're in IT, you absolutely need GoToAssist by Citrix. I did 10 years as a sysadmin, and I wish I had learned this earlier. Uh, assist anyone. Sign up for your special 30-day free trial today. Just visit GoToAssist.com, click on the Try It Free button, and use the promo code HACK5. Let's go to assist.com, promo code HAK5. And we're back with the Technolus photo of the week. 
Now this one's hilarious. I absolutely loved it, so I had to include it in this week's episode. It's a little bit delayed since it's not Halloween October time anymore, but this was taken on October 31st, so why not? So this is a hilarious Halloween photo from one of our viewers, Bob. He said it's odd, but he, aka the Lord of Death apparently, did not want to chat about the release of the Mark V. Hmm, surprise. <laughs> he probably just wanted to talk about candy and tricks, maybe. You can send your photos, of course, over to feedback at hack5.org. Make sure to use the little subject line technoless, though, so that we can definitely find it and show off your pictures in the next episode. And we're back, and that about wraps up this episode of Hack 5. But first, a few things that I have to get to. First off, the Hack Shop. You can always support us over at hackshop.com. We do have a brand new product over there. It's the Wi-Fi Pineapple Mark V. Oh, you have to welcome it with open arms. The thing is gorgeous. Darren created so much along with Seb and the rest of our crew here. So definitely go check that out. Still the same price as the Wi-Fi Pineapple Mark IV. It's totally awesome. You gotta check it out. And once again, thank you so much. Of course, our audience, our deepest gratitude goes to you guys for your continued support of Hack5. Hackshop.com, again, that's where you can support us as well, and we couldn't do it without you. And if you want to check out everything that we are doing, you can always email us. You can email feedback at hack5.org. Let us know what kind of things you want to see on the show, what subjects really matter to you, and what you want to continue seeing in the future. And also, don't forget, you can follow us directly over at hack5.org follow. That's where you'll find links to our Twitter, 